Can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey, darling, we could get out of town. See the beautiful world around, wanna see it now. We live in the heart of the Australian wilderness, nestled among the eucalyptus trees and the rugged terrain. And we've chosen an off-grid life. We recently had a big fire go through our property, but it couldn't steal our spirit. As the landscape begins its slow recovery, signs of life have started to emerge. So all the feral goats seem to be coming to our property to eat all the new grass that's coming through. Truffles is a year and a half now and I think she is starting to develop those maternal instincts as she's maturing. She's really um, showing that pack instinct that dogs have developed over their evolution uh, to protect the pack. She's constantly vigilant and alert of any new people or animals in the environment and she moves between us and a possible threat, barking at what she thinks might be a threat. Get away. Come. Post-fire regeneration often follows a process called ecological succession and the pioneer species which are well suited to colonising the disturbed areas are usually the first to establish themselves. And over time, these pioneers create the conditions that are more favourable for other, more established plant species to thrive. And this process continues until the ecosystem gradually returns to a state similar to its pre-fire condition. A few concerning things about Australia's climate has been recorded recently. Most parts of Australia have had the warmest winter on record. We're in the first couple of weeks of spring here in Australia now and we've been told that the temperatures are going to be scorching and that El, El Nino is forming as well. So it's possible that we won't get nearly as much rain as we normally do during the wet season as well. This is very concerning out here when we rely completely on rainwater collection. One of the most significant factors behind the recent spike in temperatures is climate change. And if El Nino actually happens this year, it means that it's likely that next year will be even hotter. And they're saying that 2024 will be possibly the warmest year on record globally. So I guess that we're really lucky that we had our big fire already come through our property and hopefully that will be a bit of a protective factor for us especially if it is true that the worst is yet to come. The kangaroos love the new grass too. You can see where the fire burnt all the trees from where they're orange. And Truffles has found an old dead fleece from a dead sheep probably um, to play with. So even though baby goats are really cute, um, they're actually not native to Australia and they're uh, declared a pest as well because they eat the native plants and they also um, compete with native animals for food, water and shelter. They cause soil erosion and they also can spread diseases to domestic livestock like sheep and things like that. So... It's um yeah it's it's something that the New South Wales government are trying to manage. Feral goats can quickly reduce the diversity of plant species by overgrazing and preventing the regeneration of some trees and shrubs. Goats can just eat just about anything. They eat foliage, twigs, bark, flowers and roots, but we're also just about to plant some new fruit trees as part of our food forest and it's going to be just outside of our um, fence so we're going to have to really protect these new trees from the goats because if they wander down and start trying to eat our trees they're going to eat our fruit and everything as well. The possums also love the fruit so 
we'll just have to keep an eye on everything and make sure they're very well protected. An average size goat can also drink 4.5 litres of water per day. And so because we have all of our um, dams or artificial watering points all over the property, they're probably making the most out of that as well. Truffles loves to go swimming in our dams and our creeks out here. It's hard to believe that just a couple of months ago, our entire property was black from the fire. So this is a fig tree. I think it might be a strangler fig. So I believe that these strangler fig um, trees send down aerial roots and when they reach the ground, they take root thicken and they gradually enclose the original tree which dies and rots away and eventually a fig tree with a hollow trunk is formed. Worldwide there's about 750 species of fig and in Australia there's 45 native species and apparently you can eat these figs fruits as well. I'm also keen to try making stinging nettle tea as well. Never felt tomorrow closing in this fast. Oh, I guess time's in a rush. We found some more dog rose or rose hips here. It looks like a, it's been a bit burnt though as well. The Bundjalung and the Yukumbu people were the First Nation people who were the original custodians of this land. We pay our respect to their elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people today. We reflect on their past mistreatment, especially the f children that were stolen from their families. So Truffles has decided to chase all the goats away. They were starting to get a bit close for comfort. It's time to get some well-earned rest because tomorrow we have a big day ahead of us. Sometimes I understand I'm making all the wrong demands in life. It never pays in. Our journey today takes us to a local soil supplier where we'll be picking up the key ingredients for our raised garden beds for our herbs and vegetables. So with the trailer loaded and a heart full of excitement, we're ready to head back to the off-grid homestead to get our hands dirty. It's time to transform these raised garden beds into a lush oasis of herbs and vegetables. And the trailer's so heavy that the tyres are almost flat on the ground there. This soil and these garden beds are going to be a game changer for us. They're going to allow us to grow even more fresh produce and herbs right here on our homestead. Although the overnight temperatures here are still falling to below zero, hopefully within the next week or two, there'll be no more frost. We are so grateful to our friend Daryl who donated these garden beds to us. And also our friends Peter and Jane who put the garden beds together for us. So far it's been a group effort. We've lined the bottom of the garden beds with some cardboard and we've added some sticks and things to the bottom as well as a little bit of um, ash from our indoor fire.
With each shovel of earth, Paul's blistered hands dug into the soil, but he was unyielding. And the birds above sang their songs of encouragement, and the eucalyptus trees that surrounded our property whispered secrets of the land. And Paul's muscles ached. His body was covered in a layer of dirt, yet he persevered, knowing that the rewards would be worth the effort. And with each shovelful of earth that he added to the raised bed, we envisioned the lush herbs that would soon grace our table. We're so happy with how the garden beds turned out and can't wait to get some beautiful green, fresh herbs in there. And hopefully they will provide us with fresh and healthy food for months to come. I can't wait to see them grow and harvest them when they're ready. Our peppercorn reaches for the endless blue sky. And we marveled in the vibrant greenery that seemed out of place after the big fire. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more off-grid adventures. Thanks for watching and chat to you next time.